So let us continue our discussion on uh, machine learning lectures. So in the previous uh, class, we discussed about uh, Bayesian classification, uh, considering the risk factors as well, or the last factors and risk. Okay, we will see that little more in this class, and we will see uh, the decision boundaries, visualization of decision boundaries in different cases. Okay. Yes. Let me share the screen. Hope you're able to see the shared screen now. Yes, sir. So, uh, in the last class, what uh, uh, we discussed is that whenever we are taking an action alpha i, that is assigning the sample x or s to a particular class omega i, okay? So, each of the action has an associated loss factor. That is, especially when we assign a sample that belongs to other class, but we take an action, okay, of assigning to a different class. In that case, we have a loss, quantified loss, okay? So, we want to take a general case where we want to see the loss of assigning if there are three classes. Say, if you want to, if the sample belongs to first class, we may assign it to first class, second class, or third class. So, the loss of assigning the sample of first class to second class may be different than assigning it to third class, okay? So, similarly, uh, the loss of assigning first class sample to second class may be different than second class sample to first class. Okay, so we want to see all these quantifications. We want to quantify all these things and we want to include all these quantifications into the classification or decision boundary. Okay, that can be conveniently done through loss factors, which are referred to as loss factors, where we quantify the loss of taking action alpha i when the sample belongs to omega, omega z class, okay? And these loss factors are all like for a particular action, we see the uh, overall risk of assigning or taking a particular action on X, okay? That is assigning X to a particular class in, in the form of risk. That includes all the loss factors associated with that action. Okay, if you are considering about action alpha one, we consider all loss factors considering in the, referring to action alpha one. Okay, so in that way we have quantified and with that we have seen how to take the decision boundary. Okay, so uh, now uh, let us take it little forward. As I said, this is referred to as loss factors. Okay, and this is referred to as risk in taking alpha one action. Okay, in alpha one action. Fine. So, so far any questions here? Subsequently, we also have quantified risk of taking action alpha two. Okay, by this. And then if you want to use the risks you now instead of the uh, probabilities to take a decision. What we have said is we can have the decision rule like beside SA next to that class having minimum risk. Okay, similarly, the decision boundary can be obtained by equating the risk. That means if you have a say, if some region has a risk of assigning to omega one class being less, in some other region risk of assigning to omega two class being less, then there is an intersection region or there is a common point where the risks are equal. That gives us the decision boundary. Okay, that's what we have done, discussed in the last class. And we can also quantify the probability of risk, okay, as at a given X, if you want to quantify, then how do we, what did we say? For a given X, whichever is the minimum risk with that you are taking classification, and hence, that will be the associated probability or the risk. Probability of error or the risk. Yeah. Request you people to mute. I am giving uh, the uh, um, co-host permission to uh,
या सुमन ओके प्लीज म्यूट वेन एवर समबडी इज नॉट टॉकिंग बट देर इज नॉइस देर यू आर एबल टू सी देड स्क्रीन आई होप नाउ अगेन यस यस ओके सो नाउ द क्वेश्चन आर दिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ओके सो विच इज बेटर इज टेकिंग क्लास बेसन क्लासिफिकेशन विथ posterior probability is better or posterior classification like bayesian classification with the risk taking the risk into account is that gives better decision boundary and better decision rules what you people feel can i get an answer I which is better posterior posterior is better okay fine others agree with that or any other like answers i would like to he hear at least one more answer uh, of other side sir taking uh, risks into account would be better sir. yeah risk better other people are saying okay can some of you who said risk is better can you justify Sir, sure. in, uh, risk, even though we are making mistakes, uh, our mistakes don't uh, cost us as much as they do in posterior. Right. Okay. So, even though so that means you are taking that the posterior classification, post posterior probability is high, but still the uh, if there is a mistake, okay, that will cost very high if the risk is high. So that you will be able to take care in risk. that's what you are saying is it is yeah am i correct yes sir that was what i am saying right so this is a good answer there is one more answer can i get a better uh, like another view of this why the risks are better okay let me uh, try to put it okay so here let us okay so we said overall risk is equal to R of x into p x d x. Okay, R of x is minimum of R of alpha a given x in each region. Okay, so this expansion we will see uh, subsequently. Now, since the point has come, let us write the risk of taking action alpha one given x. Okay, again let us write in simple notation. So uh, please check and tell whether what I am writing is it correct or not. is this fine what should i write now next lambda 1 lambda 1 1 yeah lambda 1 next should i yeah. lambda 1 2 omega 2 given x right now oh, this is because lambda i j we have defined as okay lambda of alpha i given omega j okay this is the definition we have defined before okay with this i have written like this now let me write the next one as well r of alpha 2 given x okay this is risk in taking action alpha 1 this is risk in act taking action alpha uh 2 what should i write here should be 2 1 lambda 2 1 okay so what i'm saying is uh taking risk into account for decision is better and i say that taking risk into account account is a super like is a uh, includes posterior also into account that means it is uh, it can it takes the all advantages of using the posterior and it has a better additional advantages of using last factors okay is that correct or not yes sir huh? yeah somebody is trying telling correct but let us see see a simple case see if there is a uh, in simpler case what do you think is loss in assigning alpha 1 action or x2 omega 1 when it belongs to omega 1 class okay in very uh, common case in chutuli zero yeah uh, so it is zero. right similarly lambda 2 2 what do you think this is lambda 1 1 Lambda two two. What do you think? Same, sir. Ideally zero. Zero. Okay. Now, ideally, uh, or intuitively, ideally, 
what do you think lambda 1 given omega 2 if i assign okay a sample which belongs to omega 1 2 class but to omega 1 class what do you think the loss is say i say that it is 1 okay i just quantify it as 1 similarly i also say that this is equal to lambda 2 1 okay so lambda 1 to lambda 2 1 is equal to lambda 2 1 okay oh is equal to 1 so in this case now what is the risk of alpha 1 given x risk in alpha 1 given x is how much p of uh, w2 given p of w2 given x okay and similarly r of alpha 2 given x is how much p of omega 1 given x see what is this r of alpha 1 given x now quantifying if you compare with the decision with posterior what is this it is the same as posterior same as posterior sir yeah okay decision boundary is same as posterior but what is r of r of alpha 1 given x so decision boundary if you ask then i think decision boundary here also we compare r of alpha 1 given x is equal to r of alpha 2 given x okay which is in fact leads to p of omega 2 given x or sorry yeah oh p of this implies p of omega 2 given x is equal to p of omega 1 given x okay so it is essentially same decision boundary as posterior okay right so if this addition boundary is same decision rule is also same correct or not and if the decision rule is also same then what will, what else will be same error will be same probability huh? of, probability of okay. error will be same yeah of error also is same okay same probability of error probability of decision boundary and so on in which case in which case is this happening ideal conditions yeah yeah in a special case of yeah in a special case of zero one last function this is called okay so lambda 1 1 lambda 2 2 equal to 0 lambda 2 1 lambda 1 2 equal to 1 so this is a common case or a ideal case if we don't have any information we just assume that okay each class is equally like you okay and hence lambda 1 2 equal to lambda 2 1 and uh, we don't want to bring in any special constant so we will put one here similarly uh, loss of assigning the same uh, sample to the same class is zero so that is uh, intuitive uh, and that's what we have here this is in special case this is referred to as zero one last function okay yeah so further what did i ask is what is this quantifying r of alpha 1 given x is equal to p of omega 2 given x it seems so by what is this quantifying if you remember previously okay so assume that i have a uh, uh, assume that i have a okay for feature x this is region r1 okay assume that this is region r2 okay then what does p of alpha 1 given x will quantify in region r1 because this is r1 right in this region i am assigning to say this this is the r, say if this is minimum i assign to this class r1 right so in r1 what does this quantify then The risk of assigning uh, to class yeah, alpha omega one. Yeah, we have made it. We have defined a term. Say if x belongs to R one, okay, this quantifies what? This is nothing but what? Hmm? Do you agree or not? This is nothing but 
probability of error given x which is equal to p of omega 2 given x because in region r1 we are assigning x2 omega r1 means through posterior probability we know that p of omega 1 given x is higher than p of omega 2 given x correct and hence this is the probability of error given x is equal to p of omega 2 given x correct or not i didn't hear you people agree with me or not hmm yeah no response what is this in if i assign so in case if okay if x belongs to r2 in some region so another x okay x1 probably x test okay x test 2 oh it belongs to r2 then means what is this what this corresponds to in r2 if x belongs to r2 at that x what is this oh huh? yeah you are there or not yes sir yeah is it clear or not yes sir yeah what is this then x belongs to r2 if i if this is the decision okay then r of alpha to given x is what p of error over x yeah p of error given x okay at that location of x okay and that is exactly same as r of x here okay so what i am trying to say is this is nothing but okay the p of error given x is equal to r of x in this particular case okay so we have defined r of x here but we can define it slightly differently as well okay with notation but this is exactly risk in at x is equal to probability of error given x in which case in which case in the special case of zero one loss function okay yes sir right so now in general so now let us see this for multi class and then we will move on to the other discussions so assume that now omega 1 since we said there is a general uh, things okay we omega c classes we want to write okay the risk of taking action alpha 1 given x okay similarly we want to write okay any risk of taking action alpha i given x subsequently okay and then i want to write the overall risk okay so these are the things i want to write in this special case i am putting anyway capital x means that many features are there with me okay the only change when we have many features compared to single feature is what where do you think the change will be many features to single feature where do you think this change will be x will huh? be a vector x will be a vector so right fine where that reflect in this r like overall error or overall risk and so on or decision boundaries which is the term that brings in this multiple features into account hmm which is the term now you are able to locate still you are not able to locate some of you should be able to tell now okay for c classes i summed over c for p of x and which one will okay for with multiple features p of x given omega i will be equal to what if they are independent you can say that p of okay x1 x2 okay up to xd given omega i okay if they are independent you can still say that p of x1 given omega i okay into oh p of and so on p of okay xd given omega i okay this is the one which will bring in multiple features okay aspect into the okay classification through posterior or to directly through likelihood okay and then subsequently the risk and so on okay please note that this is a scalar okay since this being a scalar okay even multiple features for us only requires uh, like little more computation on the likelihood aspects but they doesn't reflect anywhere else okay they will be almost similar however in the decision boundary when you do what will happen x1 x2 xd will be there right so in the decision boundary 
Okay, in stuff, uh, say if you compare, in, if there is only one dimension, okay, then you may have a point based decision boundaries. If you have two dimensions, x1, x2, line based decision boundaries or curve based decision boundaries, they are two dimensional, two degree polynomials will be decision boundaries. Okay, so if there are three, then they will be hyperplanes uh, and so on. Okay, that we will see subsequently in the uh, slides today. Okay. So before we uh, move on to the slides and uh, some visualization of these things, let us complete this. How should I write R of alpha when given X in multi-class scenario? I need some help. Uh, so if no one tells, I will keep completing the writing. Lambda alpha two, I want to, we have omega 2 given x and so on up to lambda 1c p of omega c given x. Okay. And r of alpha i given x, how should I write? Any inputs? Uh, you will be given only a few fractions of seconds plus lambda given x and so on up to lambda i c p of omega c given x. See, now assume that in this case, I have 0, 1 last function. Okay, in this case, 0, 1 last function means what? Okay, just to see whether your understanding is uh, clear or not, I'm bringing these cases. But in solving the problems, you can do uh, like these loss factors also will be given. If I want to ask you, if I ask you to use the risk for classification along with likelihood and priors. Okay, so uh, you have to substitute accordingly. Uh, so you should know where to substitute and so on. Uh, and what are the expressions? Okay, these all expressions are very intuitive and you can easily write uh, if you understand so nobody will provide you the expressions okay in exam it's assumed that you can easily write them okay yes. if it is zero one last function for c classes what what does it mean lambda ij equals zero for i equals two yeah a lambda i equal to zero uh, so yeah fine that's also a good way of defining uh, cc equal to zero that is Lambda i j is equal to zero if i equal to z. Fine. And it is equal to one if i not equal to z. Okay, this is also a very good way of defining. Okay, essentially this means and then lambda, okay, one, two is equal to lambda uh, or two, three or anything. Okay, uh, is equal to all equal to one. Okay, I'm not writing, but this is the good way of defining. Okay, fine, good. So now this is the case. In this case, let us here write first, okay, R of, okay, alpha i given x. I just want to simplify. Okay, can you give me a simplified answer for this? What should I write? I need some good answer now. What should I write? Oh, you can't keep watching for the class. R of Commission. alpha i given x. Commission uh, j is varying and uh, lambda of uh, i comma j. Okay, summation j, j not equal to i. This is what you are saying? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, correct? P of omega j given x. Yeah, this is what you are saying? Yeah, it was simplified, yeah. Very good. So, but still I can simplify further. Can one of you tell even oh. further simplification of this? 1 minus P of uh, omega I by X. Very good. Okay. So this is what is the loss. Okay. Or this is what is the okay uh, risk in taking action alpha I. And if we, if we use the posterior properties, what did we define this as? If I'm assigning to omega I class because P of omega I given X is higher, then we defined this term as something. 
what we define this as what huh? so r of alpha given x is equal to what in zero one last case Probably yeah i need some answer error over given x p of error given x okay so that's what is being seen here okay so now this is all fine okay let me only i want to write r of x expression somewhere okay uh okay so let me uh, uh right here r of so total risk overall risk i want yeah can some of you tell the expression for overall risk how should i write what did we define integral of r of see there are simply i can write r of x into p of x dx okay over all x okay let this be one dimension two dimensions or multiple dimensions r of x is what r of x is equal to what did we say minimum okay among r of alpha i given x okay for all i okay that is r of alpha i given x so that is r of x is this correct or not huh? so i want the expansion for two class case oh just to have a clear idea on how to write this okay so i assume that i have some region r1 okay two class case two feature case assume that okay i have region r2 oh, so this will split then tell me so i need uh, help of some of my uh, the students to complete this what should i write uh, under integral r1 here what should i write yeah no hints how many features you said in each class how many features two features so alpha 1 alpha 2 can be taken as two features okay alpha 1 alpha 2 can be taken as two features is that correct the classes ah uh, do alpha 1 alpha 2 are what a class action action actions for courses yeah two actions okay action of defining of actions action of okay x belonging to omega 1 or omega 2 comma omega 2 respectively right right so now what should i do here this is fine then what i need someone helps to fill alpha 1 given x alpha 1 given x into p of x dx right very good so if i were to you if i need to use the posterior property what i might have used here in region r1 p of omega 2 given x yeah p of omega 2 given x i might have used okay but whereas here i am using okay r of green region r1 i am taking decision with minimum risk so that itself will count okay okay and here r of x alpha to given x into p of dx okay so further uh, simplification of this r1 so i let me expand this lambda okay i can put the whole thing okay lambda 1 1 lambda 2 2 in fact i should put the whole thing okay when i expand but if i assume zero one last function okay if not zero one last function usually the questions are okay in many of the questions lambda 1 1 lambda 2 2 okay these we assume zeros okay lambda 1 2 may not be equal to lambda 2 1 okay and there may not be equal to 1 also okay so this may be the general a um, little more general setting okay so in this case we want to write the risk okay just to see the risk in uh, like expanded form what should i write now can some of you help the summation j not equal to i no summations i want to use this is only for two class lambda 1 to p of omega 2 given it Two because the action alpha one p of omega two given x okay into 
dx1 dx2 if it is two features plus Huh? Is this correct? Don't we need p of x also to be a multiple? Very good. We need p of x. Why we need p of x? Oh, why we need p of x? Oh? Expectation. Yeah, this is expectation that is fine. Further, see, the error is at given x, but we don't know with what probability this feature x will occur among the all possible features. Okay, oh, our possibilities for the feature values. That's why we put p of x. Okay, so I think now you see here lambda one to lambda two, and if they are ones, okay, then simply you have the error which we have previous probability of error given x, probability of error expression. Okay, this is equal to okay probability of error. In fact, exactly equal to probability of error. Okay, total probability of error if okay lambda two one is equal to lambda one two is equal to one. Okay, in addition to huh along with lambda one one is equal to lambda two one is equal to lambda two two is equal to zero. Fine. Hope this is all clear. so you will be able to do this in problems okay you will be able to find the decision boundaries you will be able to find the uh decision rules you will also be able to find the overall risk or probability of error okay in uh, any of these cases that's what i assume okay based on this either for one feature or two features or even for multiple features if i ask you to find with 10 features okay do bayesian classification okay wow what do you think you will do how do you think you will do Say, I assume that to simplify my question, I will only ask you to do classification based on, uh, uh, say, posterior. Okay, but there are ten features. What do you think you will do? Huh? Is the question clear? So the question is, you have actually ten features, x one to x ten. Okay, I ask you to do okay classification, Bayesian classification. Using posterior. Okay. Ah, huh? so hmm. Ah, oh, ah, uh, how do you do? that is the question i need some answer any answer we can begin with finding the decision boundary okay Let's see dimensions What will you do with decision boundary? So, if you want to do decision boundary, you have to solve this. P of omega one given x. Okay, yet let it just you even two class problem. P of omega two given x. Okay, yeah, uh, it is in ten dimensions. X one, x two, x ten will be there. Uh, can we go for the max of P of omega? Yeah, right. Okay. And the ah uh, so what we do is ah uh, so we formulate p of okay just formulate formulate p of x given omega one i okay and p of omega i into p of x given omega i okay then what do we do this is in fact equal to c times p of Omega i given x. Do you agree or not? Okay, some constant times p of omega i given x is this. So then, what do we do? Just formulate this. That means whatever may be the dimensions. Okay, you know it's uh, assuming that it is Gaussian. 
okay you can substitute the uh, like you have the expression with you okay multivariate gaussian expression uh, so you can use it and formulate it so multivariate gaussian expression will enable you to write okay p of x given omega i okay as 1 by 2 pi whole power d by 2 all that is there right uh, power half covariance matrix you can find okay x minus mu uh, for that class or uh, transpose sigma inverse into x minus mu i okay for that class you can formulate this and keep it with you okay this is likelihood omega i uh, class likelihood okay what do you do with this then after formulating what do you think you will do ha huh? any idea see how do you get this mu i and sigma i okay and how do you get this mathematical form for the likelihood in real cases they are not very straight forward see if you are given in training samples at the beginning assume that x1 x2 assume that up to x100 okay belongs to omega 1 class x101 to say for example x250 belongs to omega 2 class okay you, you are only given this you are not even given the mathematical form of the likelihood in that case it is too difficult however if they give that the these samples of class 1 will have a likelihood okay p of x given omega i given by a normal density with mean mu i and covariance matrix sigma i this information is given similarly it is given that p of x given omega i omega 2 also has a normal density okay there is a likelihood is also normal with mu 2 and sigma 2 mu1 and sigma1 and mu2 and sigma2 this much information is given that means the mathematical forms of the likelihoods are assumed to be gaussian okay even then the question is how do you get the sigma1 mu1 sigma2 mu2 if you directly find the sample mean sample covariance they are only sample mean and sample covariance they are not the mean and covariance of the gaussian distribution that fits these samples okay not necessarily okay so the question in the next class is to see how to find the statistics of the likelihood if i give you a mathematical form okay so if i say that they are gaussian then how do you find the mean and covariance that best fits the likelihood of the samples hope you got the point okay so now assume that i also given or uh, uh, asked you to assume that the sample mean and sample covariance are the best fit of the likelihood mean and likelihood covariances up to that also if i give then you can write like this okay p of omega i given x is equal to in gaussian form okay so these are found by sample sample mean and sample covariance okay so in that case if i give you now two assumptions okay assumptions made here what are the two assumptions i made can some of you spell out that we are uh, given the, uh, the likelihood of the samples are the best fit for the likelihood given sample. likelihoods likelihoods are gaussian okay we are assumed that given that the likelihoods are gaussian okay this is the first assumption that's why we are able to write okay this is the first assumption will enable us to write this okay assumption first okay uh, and second assumption is what second assumption is what what is second assumption i made here so uh, that the sample mean is uh... yeah. So sample mean, sample statistics equal to normal density statistics are Gaussian uh, likelihood statistics. Okay, likelihoods may not be Gaussian; they may be something else. But I am just assuming for time being 
Okay, they are Gaussian and their sample statistics is equal to likelihood statistics. Okay, so if I make these two assumptions, I can write like this. Assume that I gave all this, oh, I made these assumptions and wrote this. Okay, then now tell me, okay, what should I do for doing the classification? Give me some procedure. What is first step? What is second step? And what probably is the final step? Yeah, what is first step? Hmm? We have two and class classification problem. We quit the posterior probability set of Yeah, that is fine. That's all later, right? First posterior probability has to come. Then you can equate. Where is the posterior probability? We have to find, the, find the sample mean. Okay, find sample mean. Okay for class one and say that class one samples only. Okay, then formulate, okay, N of, okay, just probably first find the sample means. Okay, and okay, for class one, omega one, similarly, U two and sigma two for omega two samples. Okay, found it. Okay, what is the next step then? Did it? Find what it? Huh? Find the likelihoods. Yeah, write the likelihoods. Okay, p of x given omega one as normal with mu one comma sigma one cove like it's a multivariate Gaussian. Okay, and then p of okay, I did it. Next, what is next step? Okay, next step. I have now a test sample. Okay, to be classified into one of these categories because. So far, I have formed likelihoods and all with training samples. Okay, this is all done with training samples. I have no test sample. What should I do with that? I want to put into one category. How? I need some answer. I, which category should I put? That is my question. X T is there. Are you using likelihood here or pro, a posterior? Posterior, I said. For classification. Okay. Right. We find P of omega at X, the test. Yeah. Where we want to. So I have written here a constant of this, right? So what I will do is P of omega 1 into P of X given omega 1. What is this X now? This X is what? The test. Right, very good. This is XT. Please note that. What I'm doing now? Huh? I'm just comparing by substituting the test sample into these two. And I will put to that category wherein which one is? X belongs to omega 1. Okay, if, okay, this is higher. This one, correct? That's what I will do. Is this clear or not? Is this clear? Sir, but what happens to the P of X in the denominator? I don't understand. Uh -huh. Probability of X in the denominator. Yeah. Uh, is that necessary to consider? Is that necessary to consider? Hmm, I am putting case. the question back to you. I don't, I don't Not know. in this case, because anyway, after, uh, I mean, both the terms include P of X, so. Right. Okay, okay. Right. Yes, hmm? yes. Yeah, right. So this is classification with multiple features. Okay, and this is what you do, okay, through your uh, all in uh, uh, like practical examples and practical mini projects and so on. If I ask you to apply patient classification for, okay, digit recognition or for face recognition or any other problem, this is what you can do. You don't aim to find the decision boundaries. Okay, please note that decision boundaries are in 10 dimensions. 
okay you will be caught up you can't plot them you can't visualize them you can know nothing about them okay you should only compare the likelihoods or the posteriors or the risks okay and then take a decision and the common things in that also you should not bother to compute okay they are too tedious okay better not venture to compute them or not not necessary to compute them okay is this clear yes sir okay so if there are no questions i will be moving on or oh, to the discussion on uh, some slides right so you are able to see some slides now i hope right yes yes sir uh -huh. you are able to see slides yes sir okay so uh, let me see if i can yeah i i think it's fine so uh, i will be discussing on uh, bayesian decision boundaries and later fusor extraction from images okay first let us complete the bayesian decision boundaries i will be projecting the slides here and keep asking you okay the questions on what does these slides represent okay quickly answer me so that i can move on so what does this slide represents likelihood we have x even omega of two classes so with this what you can do with previous slide what you can do find likelihood decision boundary based on likelihood city yeah decision based on likelihood you can do what does this indicate what does this slide considering uh, posterior or probability sir yeah so what do you notice here there are several decision boundaries uh -huh. yeah very some good. is one yes, that is one point okay uh, so any other things blend of both uh, likelihood and prior probabilities yeah very good anything else if you sum at any point of x okay what do you expect to get the two uh, p of one. omega x no, one. Is one right okay so what is this representing can you guess this is called ra likelihood ratio okay i am trying to see even likelihood ratio will give me a quantification on say if i put a threshold usually it is saying p of omega x given omega 1 greater than p of something Or p of x given omega two. Okay, then I put two omega one class, right? Or p of x given omega one by p of x given omega two ratio greater than some quantity. Okay, some theta. I put into omega one class. So I can take decision either using likelihoods or posteriors or likelihood ratios. Okay. So I will not discuss much on it, but I think you can see in the textbook. Sir, shouldn't theta a be equal to one? Very good. So when theta a equal to one. when it may not be equal to 1 you brought a nice point okay when when the posterior probabilities prior probabilities are different right when the prior probabilities are equal it is equal to 1 when the prior probabilities are different then theta a equal to greater than 1 or less than 1 okay that based on that the decision boundary shifts up or down okay for example if uh, p of omega 1 is higher then the theta a will be less or less than 1 or greater than 1 Hmm? Okay, you want to think of when prior probability of omega one is higher. Okay, then theta y will it be less than one or greater than one? So what we are saying less like huh? less than one. It is less than one because in that case what will happen? Compare to decision with one. Okay, if this is the decision with one, compare to decision with one, you will have more reason for R one. Okay, that's what we emphasize. Okay, if you come down, okay, the reason for R one increases. Correct. That's what happens if p of omega one is higher than p of omega two. Okay. Okay, let me move on. You think. 
this gaussian pdf is very clear okay uh, and uh, error functions i said the computation of all integrals okay in uh, gaussian is done through a integral of this sort okay and this is referred to as error function tables gives error functions and what does this indicate bivariate normal density oh uh, so uh, this shows in two dimensional gaussian density this is how it looks like in this case can you comment something about uh, uh, what are the circles they are the contour plots oh uh, contour plots fine but give me little more description contours of equal probability right uh, contours of equal probability density function okay and can you comment about the covariance matrix of this uh, mm, uh, features x1 x2 are they uh, not a diagonal matrix yeah they are not diagonal so it means that the covariance matrix they, there is a correlation okay and also they uh, they are not equal variances in x and y are not equal okay let me skip this okay so can you see what is this and tell what do you think is this this is a two dimensional this is a single dimensional likelihood then a two dimensional likelihood and here and maybe radius and bound right and what are these lines okay so here you can see there is a line here okay there is a plane here okay and there is a uh, red and uh, white uh, regions here what are those decision, points huh? so regions and decision boundaries right very good it is showing the decision boundaries and the region uh, of r1 r2 okay region of classification fine and what do you notice from this what can you tell about the nature of decision boundary it is a likelihood actually it What is the, likelihood p omega 1 is equal to p omega 2 that is also correct okay like pre prior properties are same so what can you infer about the decision boundary in especially in two dimensional case in two dimensional case it is a half way of mean of this yeah half way between the mean mu1 mu2 so mu1 plus mu2 by 2 it passes through okay any additional thing that you can comment so perpendicular bisector very good it is a perpendicular bisector of the means fine very good okay now what do you think are these spheres in three dimensions Uh, so unlike uh, con like circles here there are spheres in three dimensions master ah uh, master they are huh? surfaces of equal probability right they are the locus of points of equal probability oh, we okay. are the three dimensional gaussian density plotted here no sir no we can't plot it they have not plotted it they only plotted the contours of equal probability density okay and then the decision boundary is a hyperplane Okay, it's a plane. It's a plane. Okay, in more dimensions, it is hyperplane. Okay, now let us come to this case. Okay, what is this case about? Oh, this case is about non-equal prior. Happen. So in first case, which prior is higher? So in all these cases, in fact, prior one. one is no one is higher. More. No. Oh, so that the decision boundary shifts away from it. so in two dimensional decision uh, like features what do you notice the difference between the previous decision boundary and current decision boundary and what are similarities so For the, the, the yeah. shape of the decision boundary is still same it has just been shifted by uh, some distance in right. the direction of the line joining the means okay so it shifted uh away from the it's not no more a bisector but is it perpendicular to the line joining means yes sir yes okay and in your exam there is a question given like okay when this moves away from the mean like both means okay it is it should not pass in between the means mu1 and mu2 in which case it uh, goes uh, other side of the means that means decision boundary okay if it has no it should not be in between the means mu1 and mu2 then what should happen what are the possibilities 
P of omega one is much much greater than P of omega two, or P of omega two is much much greater than P of omega. One. Right, right. It should not be very near to each other. Right, very good. So, what is this case now? What can you comment about the covariance matrices in this case? They are different. They are not different. Are they different? They are not diagonal. They are. They are, they are not diagonal. But are they different? They are not diagonal because you can see that the Gaussian is not no more a symmetric uh, smooth Gaussian. Okay, but are they uh, are they different? Sigma one and sigma two are they equal or not equal? They look like equal. Hmm. They are equal. Okay, sigma one equal to sigma two. Okay, because that's why they look almost similar. Okay, except that there is a rotation or there is a their skewness in both of them. Okay, so and similar same is being shown by the contours of equal probability density function. There are now no more circles, but there are ellipses. Okay, and now what can you comment about the decision boundary in two dimensions? So decision boundary is bisector, but not a perpendicular bisector. Right. In equal probability case, it is not a perpendicular bisector, but it is a bisector. In un probabilities being when they are different, it is not perpendicular. It is not bisector. Fine. So can okay. I what? say that? Uh, so can I say that when the probabilities are uh, the pair probabilities are unequal, yeah. Yeah. the decision boundary will move in the direction perpendicular to the previous decision boundary. Yeah, it moves uh, parallel to the previous decision boundary. Mm, it moves in this uh, angle will not change. Uh, real probability only shifts. Right? I hope it clarified. Excuse me, sir. We have a class at 11 a.m., sir. Yeah, sure. Okay, then. Uh, so we will skip here. Okay, I will just complete this uh, decision boundary in uh, sigma 1 equal to sigma 2. You can take any arbitrary shape. Okay, you can see it is uh, now two decision, like not single decision boundary. Two parabolas. It can be circles, circle within circles, and so on. In four category case also, it can be arbitrary based on sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, and sigma, like sigma 4 nature. Okay, I will conclude the class now here. Okay, and in the next class, I will start discussing on other topic than patient classification, that is maximum likelihood no, classific estimation. Okay, oh, fine then, thank you. So if you have other, those who have class can leave, but those who doesn't have class, if you have any other questions, you can ask. Okay, thank you then.